What up, survivors? Welcome to D180, the horror movie podcast, taking you on a ride. Thanks for riding with us. I'm AJ. And I'm Jenna. And today, for our third movie in our theme, March of the Clowns, we're talking about 2012 Stitches. But before we do that, okay, so this one made me think of when I was younger. And, you know, we had our birthday parties. I'm assuming you've never had a clown at your birthday party. Hell no. Have you been to a party with a clown? Hell, well, not that I remember. <laughs> not, that I wonder, I, not that I can't remember. I wonder, does your mom have some, like, traumatizing story about you and a clown as a young child? And if she does, I probably blacked it out because she told me about some other traumatic experience that I had. And I blacked it out because I don't recall this. I had my stomach pumped as a child and I was fully awake for this experience. Oh, I do remember this. Okay. Yes. But I don't recall this. And I feel like things that are traumatic, I just don't recall. So. Just black it out. Just. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe somebody did have a clown at their birthday party. I don't, I don't remember. Okay, just, mm. I was the clown. We talked about this. It was me. Mm -hmm. I, I was the clown at the party, at your kid's party, twisting up balloons and doing flips and shit. It was me. <laughs> but I don't think I've ever attended a party where there was a clown that I can recall either. I was trying to see if like, mm, what does what is that actually like? Because I mean, we're performers. We know what it's like to like do something in front of yeah. people. Earlier this month, I had a dance show. And it was crazy because when I got back on stage, I hadn't been on the stage since before the pandemic. So this was the first time. It ain't post pandemic because we still in this shit. Fuck what they saying. But um, the first time <laughs> since the shutdown and all that stuff that I've been on the stage. And I forgot how that felt like. It's almost like riding a bike, you don't forget. But for some people, it's like, you know, if you ain't get it, you ain't get it. And Stitches don't get it. Clearly. <laughs> he doesn't. That is the worst fucking clown ever. <laughs> I want to know what it's like for people who are literally just clowns. Like, what is your ritual in the morning? Like, what do you do to prepare for this shit? I just want to know. I don't. <laughs> I just, I'm like, I'm still over here really trying to figure out, like, did I ever attend? And like, I, I remember balloon animals being made, but I'm like, was it a clown making these balloon animals or was it somebody else? Like, somebody when, uncle? I say, when, <laughs> like when I say that I do not visually see in my memory any clowns, mm -hmm. but I remember like stuff that would happen, like balloon animals, right. but Obviously, maybe there was a clown there. I just don't. I could have been. It's not there. Beyond <laughs> you. I feel like there's holes in my memory. I mean, that no, that's that's crazy to me. Not to go on a rant, but sometimes, you know, when I'm taking my little flights and I'm in deep thought, because that's the best. I'm just like, well, I'll be thinking back like, damn, I don't remember a nice little chunk of things that happened in the past. Like some stuff, if I think about it or somebody's like, do you remember the time we did ABC? And I think about it hard enough, maybe. But sometimes people be like, do you remember you did da, 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 da. I'm like, I did what? And I just stare off into space <laughs> like, huh? This is me? <laughs> what do you, when did this happen? I did, hmm. Now, if it's like a childhood stories, then I'll laugh because clearly I don't remember, especially if it's something like them. Like, yeah, you did this as a child. And I'd be like, oh, okay, whatever. Yeah, whatever. like Todd. But if yeah. it's like somebody saying, John A, do you remember when you went out and you did X, Y, Z? And I'd be like, huh? See, now that's different. No, I mean, just like life in general. Like when you reflect back, like, do you remember everything that happened in Brigade? For the most part. Yes. You know, and that's I what I'm the talking videos. about. And that's so, what I'm saying, like, you know, okay, so like, when I see, we are baby millennials, as we always say. So we grew up in the era, our parents had camcorders in our faces when we was growing up. There are VHS tapes of us as children. We've seen mm -hmm. these tapes. We've seen how we used to be. And for the most part, yeah. I was a sweet baby angel. 
I was sassy. I was always sassy. But for the most part, <laughs> I was a sweet girl. You know what I mean? Yeah. So when you see it, you have those memories only because you've seen it. But if you didn't, like, what all the stuff that's not on tape, do you I remember, tell any of that? I remember, like, the majority of Brigade. I do, too. I mean, it just depends on what you're... Like, it just depends now, on what I think about. College? Shit, starting to go out the window. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, no. That's, okay, so the thing for me, I remember a lot of things that happened in middle and high school. I remember a lot Don't of stuff that happened in middle and high school. I remember a lot of middle school. I remember the parts where I got in trouble a lot. I <laughs> of course. The parts that formed important parts of my life right like <laughs> but <laughs> right <laughs> but as far as like day-to-day life no mm-hmm. like i remember Naturally. catching the bus i remember right. like some moments that would happen in class like certain interactions with people that i remember mm-hmm. but like just starting to go out the window I wonder if I can find survivors, if anybody knows what I'm talking about, and you find it before I do and put it in the show notes, help with your girl. Uh, There was a lady that could literally, like, if you said a date from when she, like, obviously she had to be born in that time. If you said a date, she could tell you everything that happened that day. Mm -hmm. She must have photographic memory something because are you making this up and she like she would be go like they were asking her they would name a date they'll be like january 20th 1987 and she'd be like i had on this da 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 and this happened i might have photographic know. memory i was like damn no that's crazy that's wild but i mean like i remember choreography from sixth grade and up like i still it's some See? brigade choreography i remember it's a like, lot I don't of remember middle and high school choreography. I remember full dances. I more so remember like flashes and catch ons and things like that because we do them all the time. Mm-hmm. Dances maybe only do those once or twice, but you had to remember all of the flashes side. and catch ons mm-hmm. and side lands mm-hmm. and all that. So yeah, because I remember some from college. Now I remember some from castles. I remember some from Brigade, but and then most of the stuff at Castles was skin stuff anyway. You know one thing I never forget though. If I got a problem with somebody, I'm not gonna forget. It. Oh, Even if I'm know. over it. And you know I never, what I'm saying? You know what? I feel like I never be over it. Because when I say that I still be bringing up shit that happened in college. And someone got mad at me and was like, you're still holding on to a 19-year-old version of me. And I said, I am. Because in my eyes, you haven't changed. I mean, I agree with you. Maybe it's my Sagittarius moon speaking to your Sagittarius sun. But yeah, me too. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, I was just shanking in the air. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I maybe maybe Stitches has some sad energy. You know he what? Might. That nigga is very sarcastic. Maybe I don't know what his because it didn't say it on his tombstone. Spoiler alert! But I mean, you should have known that. But yeah, because I speak you know? in fluent sarcasm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and mine is only when needed. You know, just sparingly. But my thing is, Stitches is coming back for revenge because he did not forget what these kids did to him. If you have not seen 2012 Stitches, it's currently streaming on Tubi and Voodoo. This one dropped in And Prime. So if you have a Prime subscription, it is on Prime Video. Well, there y'all go. Another one. Because y'all know, we still trying to make up for them like three, four episodes where they would. Just... Okay, nope. Time out, because why the fuck <laughs> is Jennifer's body now streaming? At the, re- at the time of recording, it's March 6th. At the time of recording, it was like, what, two days ago? I'm watching Stitches, and I text John I said, bitch. She said, bitch. I said, girl. She was like, what? I said, Jennifer's body 
is streaming. She was like, see? I was like, that's that shit. Like, and you know what else is that shit? What? How Alexa is fucking weird and we predicting my shit. So oh, I'm just scrolling. Oh, no. okay. No, I'm talking about something else. Okay, go ahead. No, I probably do get whatever you're excited about. But I'm sitting here scrolling down my fire stick trying to pick one of that many apps to watch probably netflix or something else whatever and i scroll down and it like has the video recommendations of like what you should watch next mm -hmm. guess what was on my what you should watch next terrifying no stitches oh and i hadn't even oh. watched it yet so i was really scared and confused i mean okay now to be honest majority of the time when you watch any of the clown movies, because we just watched Clown and Terrifier, anytime you watch any of those and it everything we cover in this month in the suggestions, it's going to be one of those movies. So Yeah, but that was the first time that Amazon accurately predicted what I was actually going to watch next. Mm -hmm, and it was right. creepy. <laughs> Y'all got three chances to see it. Go see it. I mean, if you're listening to this episode in like the future, future, it's probably still going to be there. I'm not going to stunt. I remember seeing this like low key back when it came out. And I think it's still been on to be ever fucking since. I actually think, well, you know what? I'm getting into this pretty early, but it doesn't matter. I actually think this was when I first started fucking around with to be honestly. Clearly, this is John A's first watch, but mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure I watched this on to be. And it might not have been 2012 because I actually, I do think I was in school when I seen this because I hadn't graduated yet. So I might have been, maybe it might have been my senior year or some shit like that. I don't know. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get into Park Recommendations. I am not going to lie to you, but you know what? I run this park so I can do what I want to do. And one of my park recommendations is not a horror movie. But the things that happen in the movie is slightly horrifying. But I love this movie. Like, really, really love this movie. I might pick it for my birthday movie. I don't freaking know. But it's 2007 Super Bad. This movie reminds <laughs> me of Super Bad so fucking much. I just... Because I mean, all of the side commentary, us just following the kids around and shit, it just gave me super bad vibes. And I'd be down to watch super bad anytime. I want to try, like, when the movie dropped, like, obviously, I was, like, a freshman in high school or some shit. But I wanted to try Gold Slick. Like, I want, like, this is a whole situation. Anyway, <laughs> my second one. super bad. What? I feel like I just like, watched I rem that maybe. Like, I remember it, but I year. don't remember it. And it's then okay. Hawaii ID. Being <laughs> on everyone's t-shirts. That's all I remember. Real side note. I was on TikTok as I usually am. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And there was one, it was like, what's one trend that you want to die? And somebody, it was like a stitch. So the person cut in and they was like, we all can't be Walmart. And I was like, I'm listening. And they was like, look, I get it. Walmart got all the cute, cheap tees that we all be wearing, but we just all cannot be Walmart. Cause y'all got this Kiss t-shirt. Y'all got this Ice Cube t-shirt. Y'all got this, what's that other one? It's another t-shirt, but I know for me personally, it's that Purple Rain t-shirt. All of you, you see, that's why you laughing because you know exactly what purple rain t shirt I'm talking about. Yeah, Everybody that has that purple rain t shirt. That, um, is it Sprite or is it Sun Drop? It's one of them pops. No, it's Sun Drop. Sun Drop, yeah, it's one of them. It was the commercial. Remember that, com that commercial had everybody in the face? Everybody, we loved it. Hole. We loved it. We loved it. So Liz, it's the Sun Drop. You know, Liz, shirt. right? Yeah. You know Liz from Wizard Skin. Yeah. She dressed up as that for Halloween. She looked just like that girl. <laughs> sun drop. That that commercial, I just don't understand. Like we was in love with the sun drop. What happened to sun drop? Did it just like they still sell it? It's just they was like, I guess I, that girl must have made them some bank where they don't even gotta market this shit no more. They just they good. <laughs> it just it 
was around for the that time where the commercial was happening, everybody had the damn shun drop t-shirts and then it just like disappeared off the face. Just of like the twisted lemonade, the twisted tea. That knockout that too. video. Yeah. Like after that knockout video, you see twisted tea everywhere, but you don't see no advertising, but you see it everywhere now. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> My second park recommendation is okay. Now the only reason why I picked this is because Stitches works as a clown that you have to hire for his birthday. So apparently, okay, look, girl, you're not going to watch this movie, so I'm not even talking to you. Uh, this movie, there's a clown. This nigga name is Wrinkles the Clown. This is a 2019 movie, okay? What? Apparently, niggas are hiring clowns to come scare people. John A., I low-key want to tell you to look it up. So you just see what this clown look like, but I don't even want to do that to you. But I know your curious ass wants to look, so I'm just gonna let you figure that out yourself. But survivors, um, yes, hmm. because it sounds like real life, though. It sounds like something that somebody would do. Yeah, I think this was real. I think they were just documenting it in like the. Cl okay, now I haven't seen Wait, it, so but I've seen <laughs> clips of it. Are you telling me this is a fucking documentary? <laughs> I think it is. I don't know. I haven't seen it. I've only seen if it. It's a documentary. I, I know you don't want to watch it. it because you know I like true crime. But then I would be upset at myself that I watched. I know. It. I think it could be like mockumentary style. I really don't know. Survivors, help us out one second. Bless you. Ooh, bless you. Thank you. Okay. It's getting that time of the year. Ooh. I'm not ready. It's the first day of spring next week. I'm not ready. Okay. But yeah, I don't really know what it is. This is going that way. I just know it's a no for me. Don't do that. I don't need them type of surprises. I just, I just, why? I would hate everyone. Why would you want to hire something to scare me? Like if you're going to hire something, hire Freddy or Chucky for me. I'll even take Ghostface. Because I might actually fucking run if Ghostface popped up because I would think like, oh, this is somebody like seriously trying copycat. to pull this shit off. Like copycat. Right. Like Freddie and Chucky, I would instantly be like, oh, this is a joke. For some Don't ask me why I would think that's a fucking joke, but I would think that's a joke before. Ghostface, I'm like, like when oh. they um like well, for the, the Chucky ones, have you seen those videos where it's like they're in foreign countries and they dress little people up like Chucky? <laughs> Remember we talked about that? They did that for the Bride of Chucky promo. <laughs> it's really viral videos that he's going around on Facebook. And I want to dress like, up my kids what? as Chucky and Tiffany. I like whatever I have. I have a boy or girl, whatever. Like one of their Halloween costumes when they about two feet high is going to be Chucky and Tiffany. Because I'm just upset that all my sisters have like missed out on some really good costumes. I've talked about this before. I just don't understand. <laughs> like we had a bald hair little baby that we could have dressed as Tommy. Hello. Like, gosh, you guys are so boring. <laughs> no, <I'm> just <laughs> Survivors, oh if you God. have, <laughs> if you have any park recommendations that fit today's ride, let us know on our Twitter. <laughs> Tweet to this one was directed by Connor McMahon, written by Connor McMahon and David O'Brien, produced by Julian Ford, Brendan McCarthy, John McDowell, and Ruth Tracy. And our main cast consists of Ross Noble as Richard Stitches Grindle. And apparently, I don't know how true this is because I don't really got the full, full effect, so don't quote me. Apparently, they wanted Quentin Tarantino to play this part, and then Mark Hamill was next up. To play this role mm -hmm. and i just feel like this would have been a whole different movie but it get it gets even better the next one tommy knight that plays tom of course it's a tommy that plays a tom but they wanted daniel radcliffe this would have been a totally different movie yeah this would have been a totally different movie and that just and makes I'm me just... wonder i don't Mm, what was going on in 2012? I don't know. I can't think back that far. It was ugly. Wasn't they still coming out with Harry Potter movies back then? Hell yeah. Like, yeah. I think this was like right before busy. maybe he was starting to break out into like, or this might have been right when he was starting to break out into like his own shit. I don't know. Survivors, one of y'all pop culture junkies, help us out. Like, I don't know. Anyway, 
Shane Murray Cochran as Vim as Vinny, Gemma Leah Devereaux as Kate, Thomas Kane Byrne as Bulger, Egan McQuinn as Richie, Rosin Barron as Sarah, Hugh Mulrin as Paul, and John McDonald as the Motley. Survivors, you can check below on the show notes. I got a few behind the scene clips, things from the cast like that that you guys can check out below. Most of the information that I pulled for this movie is stuff that I'll just be talking about in our review. So you know what? I guess we're getting a little mini fast pass today and we can go ahead and head out to the queue line. You ready? I'm ready. Step in line. Your number is near. Follow the sign. Your time is here. So I figured this week we would just figure out if we just have any type of clown in us by... Oh, I know I got clown in me. Baby. Oh, when it comes to our relationship deal breakers, what is it? Like, just mm, what are those deal breakers? Survivors, as always. Well, I won't say as always because, Yeah. You can play this game with us. If you go down below on those same show notes where you find everything else, you will find this game. And if you want, let us know what your results are. How much of a clown are you, Shadi? You ready? I am ready. Okay, so I haven't taken this quiz, so I don't know what's in this. So, okay? <laughs> clown shit. <laughs> <laughs> Choose the biggest deal breaker. Best friends with their ex, doesn't vote, doesn't want kids, hates pets. Um, this is hard, and I know it shouldn't be this hard, but this is hard. Um, I don't care if you don't vote. I know that probably sounds bad, but I don't care. Um, best friends with your ex, it depends. Yeah, I feel like that's, and I know a lot of y'all are like, what the fuck do you mean it depends? But it just does because like, is this like some middle school, high school shit and y'all just yeah. like some home, you know, like. Now, if it was people, your last ex, fuck no. Right. Yeah, it, it depends on the how recent it was and what type of ex this was. Was this that one right. college ex that just sent you over the edge? Because hell no, why are you friends with her? Like, hmm. Right. Right. Um, now if you don't want kids, I mean, some people don't want kids, but that's not a deal breaker. And then, you know what? It's gotta be hate pets. If you hate pets, fuck you. That's it. That's it. But it's not a deal breaker. Cause I'll probably still date you if you don't like pets. <laughs> yeah. That's why I'm like, it's kind of hard. Cause I mean, like none of these are like, I'm not going to date you. I'd still probably fuck around and find out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but that's because I, I give say... everybody a chance. I would say just because I'm just over this, like everything else, like it don't mean that we like got to get married. You know what I'm saying? But everything else, I'm just kind of like, yeah, I think the one that would probably bother me the most is the best friends with the ex. Because I just need to know which one is this. Right. Um, I'm going to go with, I'll probably go with best friends with an ex whatever choose the biggest deal breaker smoke cigarettes live six hours away is extremely cheap only listens to folk music you smoke cigarettes that's yeah i'm just thing. like smoke that's a that's a no that is an absolute my dad did that as a child and it would be like I remember sometimes this dude would be in the front seat. I would be in the back. He'd have the windows down. I'm all bundled up. I'm like, what the fuck is this? He wouldn't have my window rolled down, but like his window. But obviously I'm sitting behind him. So I'm getting all the back hair. I'm just like, oh, no, 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 no. It's just It's like the cheap thing. That's going to get on my nerves. But the thing about it is I got my own. That's what I'm saying. So, I got my own money. You know, like, <laughs> like six hours away. I actually would not be upset with that. Like, that's fine. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, My I want you here. lives in yeah. freaking Charleston. <laughs> like, I want you here. But I'm just saying, like, you know, I'm not going to be mad about that. Only listens to folk music. I don't have to. We can get you some headphones. We all don't have to listen to it. Yeah, I'm going with smoking cigarettes <laughs> because that's disgusting. Right. 
Choose the biggest deal breaker. Has bad breath, snores loud as fuck. Is a bad kisser, is bad at sex. Has bad breath. Yeah, I'm be like, I'm like, everything else we can fix. You snore loud as hell, lay on your side. Stop laying on your back. Why are you doing that? You're a bad kisser. I can get you a, that. a sleep apnea machine. Yeah. I dated someone who uses that. And he snored so loud. Yeah, you bad breath. Oof. We not gonna make it through the talking stage. Mm-mm. I hate it when I can like smell somebody's breath. First of all, we've been wearing masks. So the fact that I can smell it. I shouldn't be able to, like, just, mm. Like, you're not mad at your own breath? Like, okay, so yesterday, me and my mom and my brother, we went to this Mediterranean restaurant that's kind of like a Mediterranean Chipotle. Um, it's not kava. It was some other type of Mediterranean joint. And I don't know what, what part of the combination of different things that I ate, but I like it. The aftertaste and the after smell, because I had to wear a mask and go to my brother's basketball game. So I'm sitting here smelling my own breath and I'm like, does somebody have gum? Like, this is terrible. So if I can't stand the smell after eating all types of different food, how can you live with yourself? If you, how could you just live with yourself on a normal day? I'm wondering, do they know? You can't smell that shit! I mean, apparently not. They be walking around with it constantly. Oh my God. Choose the biggest deal breaker. Is a boring texter, has a horrible sense of fashion, is an anti-vaxxer, is always late. Is a boring texter. Yeah, I think the texter, cause fashion, baby, I could upgrade you. Anti-vaxxer, I mean, Nick, if you wanna die for it, go for it. Is always late. Um, I mean, sometimes me too, so, yeah. you know. <laughs> Choose the biggest deal breaker. Cheated on their last ex, is rude to waiters, waitresses, goes through your phone, has different politics from you. Is rude to waiters. Yeah, I don't like that. But I just, the goes through my phone, why Why are we doing this? Let me go through your phone. I don't care if niggas go through my phone. I ain't got shit to have. Nine times out of ten, I'm talking shit about you anyway. And I'm talking shit about you, and I'm talking shit to you. So... I seen this TikTok. It was like, my girl was asleep, so I went through her phone, but I only found screenshots of me cheating. Clown. Clown. I mean, if you Mm want to sit here and try to find shit, you better be happy she ain't even say shit to you. That's the worst part. That's the worst thing. This girl knows you doing this shit and you just sitting here thinking shit's sweet. That's the best part. I love that. When I find out shit, I sit on that shit for a minute before I say anything. I love that. Because oh, then I'm going to start playing accent. mind games. And now you're going to start questioning, do I know? The whole time you don't know if I know. Mm-hmm. I love it. Um, Has different politics for me. It depends on how deep that goes. So I would I would have to say it's rude to waiters. Because if you're going to be rude to them, that's just, they already having a hard day. They don't want to yeah. be here anyway. I'm kind of like. But then not only that, that, that I don't want to be with you because these people are in control of our food. Like, do you just not care if your food gets spitting? Yeah. If they scoop it off somebody else's plate and put it on your plate and look presentable? Like. The like I just y'all be better guys to think sometimes. Yeah, this one is tough. I think I'm gonna go with is rude to waiters. Choose the biggest deal breaker mm-hmm. is very clingy. Is a ooh, ooh, is a loud chewer. Is a huge a slob. Lacks ambition. Lacks ambition. I, that chewing might send me over the goddamn edge. I just, no, mm-mm. I think it's that one. The rest of these, like, is a huge slob. Actually, actually, you know, no, 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 no. 
huge slob because me i could chill like right now my little office because we trying to move stuff and like get new storage containers it's in disarray but that's fine it's a nice little organized mess and it's not you know but like i've seen some messy ass situations and i i'm picking that one because i just will not no baby i just will not like if you i it has to be it's really lacks ambition for me because it's like if you don't if you go stagnant if you're stagnant and you don't want to progress in life you don't want to do anything but just stay where you at then no because then i feel like you might hold me back because you don't want to do shit nah that's okay <laughs> choose the biggest deal breaker never wants to get married forgets anniversaries wants open relationship astrology sign is incompatible with yours what never wants to get married um out of all of these then yeah that might be the one because I mean, okay, now that astrology one, because I'm a Libra and I'm all about my peace, baby, and you Aries me and are not going to ruin that for me. Um, <laughs> I mean, I don't have to worry about that anymore, but I'm just saying. Uh, forgetting anniversaries or hurting my feelings. Open relationship, no. Because I'm stingy. And I mean, like, what's the stipulations for this? But I don't even want to talk about that because I just feel like, no. Damn. Yeah. This is not that hard for me. I think it's never wants to get married. Yeah, for me, it's never wants to get married. That's that's uh, because that's that's like that. Our at the end of the day, I want to get married, right? And if I'm talking to somebody who never wants to get married, that just means that for me, our relationship's never gonna go anywhere. So that's understandable. I'm not wasting yeah. my time with you. <laughs> uh, you do drive a good point because I like the rest, like. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put myself in these other situations. And I guess in order for you to forget anniversaries, I'd have to be married. So <laughs> my boyfriend doesn't remember simple things. Okay. I already told him that if, and when we get married, we're getting our anniversary tattooed on our ring fingers because he don't even remember people's wedding dates. Like you're supposed to be doing something. Oh yeah. Someone's so inviting me to their wedding. Oh, are we going? Oh, I forgot. And I scheduled a photo shoot for that day. Sir, what? So, you know. Mm -mm. And then for the astrology sign, you're more than just your sun sign. So I will right. be stealing your personal information as far as your um, birthday, birth time, location, that sort of thing. So, and that's easy for me to find. Um. <laughs> And once I was an open relationship, now I can do it. I'm hey, that means I can have more than one man. Okay, I'm a very open, I'm a very open person. <laughs> I got forty seven percent clown, which I knew. <laughs> you can be a bit of a clown sometimes. Most of the time, you're able to recognize when someone's just leading you on, but every now and then, you'll give them the benefit of the doubt because you're hopeless romantic, and that's a hundred percent accurate. I'll be on that clown shit. And you know what? I got the same thing. And I was trying to figure out how I felt about that. And younger me, I agree with. Older me, I think there's less clown. I think I think we well into the low 30s. Cause I used to be Cassie. I wasn't dating my best friend's ex, but I was easy manipulated. No, I was easy to be manipulated and I just wanted to be loved, okay? So I will buy it. I was probably more clown than this then. But now, I don't agree. So you can let us know what your results were on our Twitter. And while you do, we're gonna get ready to get into 2012's Stitches. Everybody happy? <laughs> Bastards. You're late. You're ugly. Shut it, you. No, you shut it. You're not me, Dad. Shut sure, I might be. It's time to cut the cake. I have no 
saying you knew so many people. Yeah. Hey, thanks for coming. Peace off. You've got a front row seat to my comeback show. You have a hair in your throat. Are you trying to be funny? Not anymore. Everybody happy? You're going. Just for the record, not every party ends with a dead client. I want to bet that you like this trailer because there's narration and title cards. I said the trailer is terrible, but it served its purpose. Just know I would never watch this movie if I saw the trailer. Oh, but you know what? It's about a clown. So I guess this is, <laughs> yeah. I was about to say, oh, John, they might like this because look, it's narration, it's title cards, like it's describing. No. It was did, it because okay. of the clown? It just didn't hit like how the early 2000s ones hit. Okay, I don't know you. what it is about those early It was the circus trailers. background title card. That's what it was. It was because Probably it wasn't black. So. Yeah, because yeah. it was black, got that grayish, mm-hmm. bluish aesthetic. And then yeah. it has that deep, whatever, whatever voice. Yeah, like, yeah. no, this was too fun. <laughs> it's a clown. <laughs> I didn't like it. But it served its purpose. Me. Yeah, no, I can, I totally understand what you mean. And I don't know if it's the nostalgia of the early 2000s as to why I love the trailers so much, even though the trailers are trash and shows everything. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I mean, it, I mean, like I always say, we are 90s babies, 2000 kids. So the 2000s, that's the stuff that's really imprinted in our brain. Think of how many commercials and stuff that we just know off the top of our head. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We were just talking about so this, like, movie, a drop commercial. exactly. So, like, movie trailers are a big part of our memories, too. So, because you know, they be right along with it. the damn commercial, the tag on commercials. Our movie starts with a ritual, <laughs> a fucking sex scene. The movie starts with a fucking sex scene. That's how I, it starts. Every time there's a scene like that in the movie, I'm always wondering. I'm like, I wonder what John May thinks because I know this girl. I know but this it was, girl. But the I'm thing about kid. it was the sex scene was terrible. <laughs> because it was like, at first I was like, okay, there's an egg with a clown drawn on it. Fine, whatever. Then it's like, okay, there's back and forth motion. But why does she sound like this? And then you pan out and you can tell that they're not even really having sex. They're just humping. I mean, yeah, I could tell, like, obviously, like, he probably has, like, a sock on or whatever. And they're just slapping cheeks. But, you know, I was just thinking, like, theoretically, like, they're supposed, you know. It was, that's the part that just, it just threw me she, off. She's eating the back shot. She's taking it. Like, he, he just it's not just- slaying it. But during the slaughter, she notices an egg that John A mentioned earlier that's encased in a little glass tube with the face painted on it. And this face is supposed to resemble stitches. He explains that they made him do it when he first became a clown. Realizing he actually has shit to do today, Stitches wraps it up to only arrive late to Tommy's 10th birthday party. Also, I just want to say, girl, you don't love yourself because I'm not fucking a nigga in his clown uniform. I just want to know how he was driving with his fucking feet. I mean, my mama used to drive with her knee and I thought that was like, I okay. still can't do that. I understand driving with your knee because at least- but he a clown, have... Janae. No, at least you have a foot on the pedals. He had no feet. 
on the gas or the brake. He is His a clown. Feet are like this. He a clown. I just I can't. I also love that we get a bit of foreshadowing with his car because one of the the left headlight is X'd out. But also, not you pulling up to the party about to hit the kids you're supposed to be performing for. Fuck them kids. No, them kids. Okay, look, let's just start this right now. Okay, before I even get into this next part, one of my top 10 fears, because I know it's not top five, I don't think. One of my top 10 fears is having badass kids. I do not want to be the parent that has the kid that everybody, like, when they know my kid is coming, they're just like, oh, my God, this little girl. This little girl. Like, <laughs> I do not want, I do not want my kids to be those kids. Like, Lord, please do not give me baby assholes, okay? A bit of sass, because I know I'm a sassy one, and BJ, he got a lethal mouth, too. But, <sighs> Yeah, I don't want bad kids. That's why, like, I'm excited to see us as parents because millennials don't take anything fucking seriously, but it's only because a lot of our life has been dark. Think about all the shit that we have been through. (laughs) We've been through a lot. (laughs) A lot. And so, like, us as parents is just something funny to see. Like, when I see my friends parenting and I just see the shit they do with their kids, I'd be like, you know what? I can't wait because I got some funny shit too and I'm on the way. But (laughs) Stitches, not you being rude to the mama. I would have sent your ass home. You wouldn't have performed that day. I want to give you shit. I want to give you no money. I'd have been like, you would turn your ass right back around and get the fuck. Like, first of all, baby, I look good. You're not coming for my looks looking the way you look. No. You ain't coming in my house talking shit. Period. (laughs) No, mm mm-mm. But she pays the man and he comes in the house and Stitches starts his show, but the kids are less than pleased. Instead, the kids bust up his act. They just, Sarah throws an umbrella. Paul pours juice into his hat. Richie pops the balloon that he's making a balloon animal with. Bulger like throws ice cream at the guy with a little ice cream scooper. Vinny ends up tying Stitch's shoelaces together. And Tommy, okay, so here's the thing. Tommy was kind of like influenced by his friends, but he still fucking did it, you know? So Tommy throws a soccer ball at Stitch's head, causing him to trip and land on a kitchen knife Chucky style on the other side of the room, unseen to the children. So the children walk around the corner. They trying to figure it out. And only how these little baby actors can serve terror on their face. Because I swear to God, it was just a clip of them. And they were just looking, not having any emotion on their face. (laughs) For like one clip, they was just like. And they wasn't too stunned to speak. It was, it seemed like the camera, they didn't know the camera was rolling. They didn't know they were supposed to be scared yet because they was clearly looking at the clown. But anyway, the clown gets up. You know, the knife is lodged in his eye. All the kids, they see him. Ah, they run away. Tommy. I want to give them the benefit of the doubt, though, because when the way that I thought they were probably feeling is like they didn't really know what happened. So they're just staring like, is this a joke? This is true. Okay, this is true. Because granted, they didn't know that the mom, for whatever reason, put a fucking knife face up in the dishwasher. Lady, you have kids, rambunctious ass kids running around. Did you see them kids running around in this damn movie? And I know how kids are. We talk about this all the time whenever we talk about kids. But I'm just like, lady, lady, you wanted this to happen. Maybe not to <laughs> stitches. But you wanted one of them kids to fall and hit that knife. Maybe not that deep. That's kind of rude. But, you know, Tommy is the only one too stunned to run. And when Stitches gets up, he removes the knife and blood just gushes out of his head all over fucking Tommy. It's so much blood. Stitches attempts to stab Tommy only to slip on a puddle of his own blood, causing him to fall on the floor as the knife falls back into his eye a second time this time killing him first of all before we talk about that i would report this nigga to the bbb even though i know this is the uk i would report to someone because he's a terrible fucking clown terrible where was the mom when all of this happened well actually i know where she was because here's the thing real quick um his mama comes back in she got that plate of jello she sees the shit that jello ain't missed a beat 
Okay, that jello hit the floor, still intact. It had like a three foot fall. Like it could have at least like splattered a little bit, but I commend her jello making skills. Also, I just want to know how you fell that far. Like it reminds me of that TikTok trend where they'd be falling and they'd mm. be falling random places. Like that old man who was eating a salad and then he like tripped and fell, put the salad back in the fridge, grabbed his car. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. exactly what him falling reminded me of. <laughs> you you fell back and then fell around the to corner the side. right around the right. corner like, <laughs> what remember when we was little and used to be like up your button around the corner that's how he fell <laughs> 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 but yeah like sis where was you at this whole time you wasn't watching the clown entertain these kids and these kids being fucking rude i would be mortified if one of my kids were acting this way like, and I know I'm not saying like I was a super super goody two shoes because by the time I got to fourth grade and they put me in a school where these kids was not wearing uniforms and they was cussing it was kind of a wrap there but I was still pretty good <laughs> for the most part I wasn't doing this and I was a bit of, I'm not gonna stunt I was a bit of a follower when I was little because I did hang out with a lot of the quote unquote like in crowd popular whatever the fuck you want to call it so you know I was just the sweet one in the group but I was never like doing this shit like this. I knew my mom was gonna whip my ass. She would no. We was not letting her do that. No. Also, how did I perfectly flip and fall back in his face? Got some bullshit. Tommy visits Stitch's grave to put a squeaky little flower toy on top, only to find a group of clowns entering an abandoned building. Tommy enters the building to find a clown performing a ritual with Stitch's egg. One member discovers Tommy and brings him to the cult's leader, the Motley. The Motley warns Tommy that a clown who dies and never finishes a party will never rest in peace. And a joke is not as funny the second time. I when was he, mad at that prof- processional. That he, 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 ha, ha, ha was creepy. I loved that. Because, but they're clowns, though. They're chanting a laugh. I thought that was brilliant. I loved it. It was creepy. What killed me, though, was when Tommy was looking out the telescope and it was Stitch's funeral and his uh whatever girlfriend who jump off, whoever. She was like, get out of my way, bitch. <laughs> I'm like, this movie, a lot of the stuff in this movie, I'm telling you, is just like super bad. It's just so fucking funny with like the offhand comments. But I definitely dug the design of all the clowns and like the clown processional. Like you have clowns from the Victorian area. Area. <laughs> you have clowns from the Victorian era. You have like the modern clown. You have like the Renaissance clown. Like you see all of these elaborate costumes, even like with all the damn eggs that we just learned about are on the wall as well. And I'm like, if this movie really wanted to, like if it had the bag, if it had everything that it needed, we could have got so many little caveats about these other little clowns. And they could have been anthologies. They didn't have to be full length movies, you know, like. This scene just looks good. Last thing I'm going to say about it is I love like the color design because everything's fucking dark, but you definitely see the bright red noses or like the greens, like certain little things stand out. Like I just, but first of all, I fully expected them to kill that little boy. Don't ask me why, but I feel like Tommy, you got touched by an angel that day, baby. Thanks for the show. Six years later, Tommy is preparing for his 16th birthday. He's still haunted by the memory of his past birthday, having frightening hallucinations such as his breakfast resembling a clown and a teacher turning into a clown and ripping off his friend Benny's genitals before tying them to a party balloon. First of all, that pimple pop into an egg. They this movie does a lot of like jump cuts like that, and I enjoy it. That was disgusting. It was a sound that it made because I know people mm-hmm. who like watching those pimple popping things. Like it's they me. find that shit relaxing. They're it's disgusting. Me. That's nasty. I, watch, I let me tell you, I watch pimple popping. I watch ingrown hair pulling. I watch earwax removal. I love it. I just it, it was the sound. I just, 
I mean, it was a great cinematic transition, but it, it <laughs> I literally said, ew, out loud because that's nasty. And that's how I feel about the mugs. That's how I feel about that. See, now we relate. Look at that. <laughs> His mom says, why are you treat why are you treating Tommy like this? He don't deserve that. I don't got nothing to say about her. I mean, she was only here for like two seconds, literally just to tell us that this little homie was gonna be alone for the rest of the movie. So we know chaos can ensue. But I'm just like, you could have been a little more like compassionate, a little more like empathetic that you weren't gonna be there for his birthday. Like maybe do something but I don't fucking know. But one thing I do love is literally right after this little breakfast scene, we see Tom grab some pills and this is a bottle of Hypnoseal. So for my survivors that know, I love that you know, because this is the medicine that Nancy takes in A Nightmare on Elm Street to suppress her dreams. Now, here's my thing. Baby, I think he needs a stronger dose of this medicine because he's still having effed up dreams because when he has that little daydream about Vinny getting his penis ripped off, that's some fucked up shit. It was the way that first, okay, first it was the way that it took so long for the clown to rip it off. Then he I mean, picked it up I and kissed it. I can imagine that could happen in real life. Like, I don't think it would be very easy. No, and I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. The thing is, this movie does a really <laughs> good job of showing us all the gore, and I'm down for that. But my next issue is that he picked it up and kissed it. And you know... If you like wee wee, that's okay. But I was just trying to figure out like, why will we, you are, you're a teacher. This is my issue. You're a teacher and this is a student and you're kissing his little Pekka. Like, I mean, what also, (laughs) what also happens is we meet the rest of the kids as teens and you know what I really like the casting because a lot of them actually do look like the older version of these younger kids when you look at them side note Bulger when he gets in the car and his mom drives him literally two seconds up the street I saw that and I was like so is she just gonna go back to the house he looked like she on the road so I just <laughs> so confused like little boy like because like, literally she two doors down literally two doors down it wasn't even two doors down that was the school the school was right there it just had a long little gate and it wasn't even long <laughs> that makes no sense but i do want to say yeah. his scarf is so 2012 now the whole scarf thing that had been a thing since like 2007 but the thing about bulger's scarf is it's the skulls the skulls on that scarf is all 2012 2013 because that's all the girls was doing then that's true then when we meet Vinny and he's like hitting on the two girls that whole conversation if it was not for captions I wouldn't know what was said Vinny said a lot of shit (laughs) he's standing outside he's smoking a cigarette and these two girls come up and he says something to the girl, and the girl's like, fuck's sake, you're gagging for it. Yeah, yeah, you're gagging for nothing. You're scared of fear of life. Get a grip. But when I, she says it, like, it does not sound like what I just said. Yeah, I had captions on, and honestly, I think I just glossed over this whole part. Because it was a lot that was going on. Yeah. You know, just we get to see everybody and what they're doing and what they turned out to be. The gym scene, I do like we follow that. I do like that we get to follow them because you do get to know them a little bit. You know, you see what everybody's got going on. The gym scene took me out. When the gym teacher is walking past all of them and nobody's trying to do shit. And then when he gets the bulger and he drops into that split hip squared and he's like, that's very good. I was like, per- <laughs> per- perfect. <laughs> So, like I said, Tom's party, like I said, Tom's birthday is coming up. And he's like, you know, I'm going to have a house to myself. But Tom is a little good boy, you know. And he's hesitating at the idea of throwing a party. So he considers having like a small little kickback situation or whatever. But, of course, his friend Vinny secretly distributes hella invites over the internet on MyFace, which is, yeah, y'all get it. 
not having been invited to come on my face, Sarah and Paul Debo their way for an invite. Later that night, another invite ends up blowing onto the grave of stitches. Can we just talk about how they just literally glued the hair on that teacher? That little slick? <laughs> like, it literally, they just glued hair on his head. It reminded me of Scary Movie 2. I cannot remember the actor's name, but the one that's in the wheelchair. Oh, yeah. It reminded me of his hairstyle. But I think it, his hair actually looked like it was coming out of his head. And when I say this nigga is bald and they just... Oh, no, this looked like Play-Doh. That looked like Play-Doh. That looked like Play-Doh hair. Like, literally, y'all remember the little Play-Doh set we had as kids that you would put yes. the Play-Doh in it and then you press it it's down so and all weird. the Play-Doh come out? That's what that looked like. Tell me I'm lying. Go look. I'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. The two bullies... She was like, you invited everybody to come on my face. And they just kept going with it. And that made that shit so funny because it wasn't like they brought the joke up again to make you be like, hey, did you hear her? Did you hear what she said? Like, they just kept rolling. Nobody laughed. Like, jokes like that it hit perfectly for me. You know, I didn't even catch that, to be completely honest. And that's what I'm saying, because they say it, they, it literally rolls off the tongue because Sarah and Paul stop him in the hallway. You know, they've been fucking with him this whole time. And they're like, do you have any weekend plans? He's like, no, not that I know of. She's like, so you're just going to lie like that. You invited everybody to come on my face. And then Paul says something and then the scene keeps going. Like nobody literally bats an eye at what she just said. Like, <laughs> I didn't I either because I didn't even get the joke until just now. That she said it. Like I just, because I saw that the dude had made the my face page. So I'm just mm-hmm. trying to like, that's i'm literally i'm taking it for literal context right (laughs) and once again i like i said i know homegirl ain't in the movie at all but a lick you gonna buy him the same bike that he already (laughs) has these parents don't be caring about these kids like just do not be given a (laughs) nut like uh, anyway tommy Vinny, richie and bulger all of whom had been present when you know stitches died they come over to tommy's house to prepare the house for tonight's party i do like this little setup scene bulger is not playing with them y'all need to get these decorations motherfucking right because we got a sweet 16 on the way kickback style also this is where bulger teaches tom to open a little jar with righty tighty lefty lucy i use that to this day yeah, I don't use it with jars, though. I use it on, like, when I'm actually, like, doing shit with tools and shit. With everything ready to go, the guests start to arrive, including Tommy's childhood crush, Kate. Stitches also comes back to life and leaves his grave. Okay, time out, because a lot of shit happens at this party. That girl that Richie was trying to talk to, and, like, she takes a sip of her drink and then she, like, spits it all back in her cup. Like, she's supposed to be rejecting him. I'm like, girl, what what was the point of that? Because now you're about to drink what you just spit back out. I just don't under... Richie, you don't need to talk to her. Like, you, it's, it's other girls at this party. You did not... This is disgusting. The scene with Bulger outside talking on the phone literally just has nothing to do with the movie. He's just this random ugly is just walked by in the shortest dress. You can see a vagina. <laughs> but he said like, vagine. He didn't say vagina. He said vagine. <laughs> like they really gave him all the good lines. And I know a lot of people really didn't like how they handle his character. I think obviously when people watch this movie, especially in today's lens, they're going to see a lot of problematic things. But in 2012, almost still the same era as 2009 we were still kind of fucking terrible and the shit was just you know i'm gonna be very honest with you i'm gonna say this last thing my high school class we had a lot of thick girls and thick boys okay and we had our homecoming but we had something it was like seniors versus juniors and we had to have like a name and in Chicago, there's this uh, group on the radio. It's called the Heavy Hitters. <laughs> so that's what we named our team, the Heavy Hitters, because we had hella thick people in our class. It was just like, it sounded real intimidated. We loved it. Okay, that was the side rant. We're done. 
it's a Chicago thing. Like if you, I'm not from Chicago. I'm from Gary, but we get Chicago radio. So like, if you're from that Midwest area, you know what I'm talking about. You feel it. But heavy, heavy hitters, sucker. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm done reliving that. <laughs> Stitch's resurrection, it gave me goosebumps. It gave me, are you afraid of the dark? I wish they didn't cut it so much with the party and it just happened in one fell swoop, but. <laughs> Cause I just started singing the goosebumps theme song in my head. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. That little. <sighs> that Good always used to get me when that g used to go past the dog and his eyes used to like change colors i used to be like oof i don't i miss childhood that's on streaming i know i'm just saying i miss childhood like oh oh yeah 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 me too girl it's ghetto <laughs> it's, it's fucking ghetto at this point of the party richie pulls out an edible and passes it around tom not knowing what it is eats the entire cookie let me tell you something okay it makes me a little bit upset because they don't really do too much with this. And I feel like this would have been such an amazing device to use in a clown movie. Because check this out. You've had an edible before. You know how that shit go. You know, if you eat too fucking much, you're pretty much a vegetable. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's not looking good for you. You're just going to be on autopilot. <laughs> like first class sunken place where you're still in your own body <laughs> but you're not con- like you're just you're a vegetable like mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. so with that being said I feel like the following scene when Kate actually gets to the party he's supposed to be coming off as days because she's like are you stoned and he's like no but it reads to me like he's more nervous than days because we've seen him be nervous around her the whole movie and it doesn't read as dazed but at the same time i like that we didn't get the stereotypical stoner because i hate that as a stoner i hate the stereotypical the well like like didn't i i fucking hate it like don't do it do not do us like that because we don't act like that not all of us like give us credit no but anyway <clears throat> like I said, imagine, okay, Tom done popped this Eddie, right? Imagine he actually seen the murders or seen like the results of the murders and he's trying to tell motherfuckers that this is happening like he was. And everybody's like, no, he just popped the edible. He just a little lit right now. Like ignoring Pop him. Like, mommy, da, 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 da. <sighs> <laughs> exactly. And everybody gonna be like, he just, you know, he just think he, he think he's somewhere else right now. Like he, he not here. Mm 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 mm. On top of this, Tommy gets startled by Paul, whose dumbass is just like a clown, who's making him stumble and injuring his head. Bulger goes to find Tommy a first aid kit while a fight breaks out. So since everybody in so since everybody in the party is occupied with the fight, Stitches just slips right in. But first of all, can we talk about this fight with Bulger, though? Yes, because thank you. Thank you. Because drag, drag her. He's drag adorable. Her. And I live. You're easier to get into than community college. He called her a knacker bitch. <laughs> and a pigeon in a tacky frock. <laughs> Fuck you, Sarah. Wait. The whole party already has. I just, weak, weak. I just, I have never seen, I want my kids, because when I was younger, I avoided these situations because I knew I couldn't joan like that until I got a little bit older. (laughs) I just, like, I was the type, I was the type that would think about shit to say, hours later after the shit didn't happen and i'm like damn that's yeah that's that. me like I wasn't, you know i didn't i couldn't think quick on my feet now i'll cut your ass up like it's just i'm, I'm coming okay <laughs> and i want i'm passing that down to my kids like hopefully they're not gonna play with you they're gonna be sweethearts but when it's time to cut up they're gonna be with the shits that's what i'm praying for my little ones because bulger kept up okay eat ate her up 
He's so adorable. He is. I love him. Tommy retreats to his tree house, followed by Kate. There, Tommy discusses his memories of the ritual he had witnessed as a child and all the research he's done since that night. Meanwhile, Pissy Paul ugh, is attacked by Stitches, who rips off his ear and one of his arms and pulls a live rabbit out of his throat before kicking his head off. Pissy Paul. So Paul is in this clown suit, y'all, right? He was tormenting Tommy because, you know, he, yeah, all that shit. He's an asshole. So he has to go to the bathroom. There's a bathroom out of order. So he got to go somewhere else. This nigga got to pee real bad. Y'all know we talk about pissing on this show a lot. Um, He don't make it and he pisses on himself. And he goes, not again. I'm like, mm. So you. That reminds me of this time that I got my ass beat for peeing on myself on purpose. Not on purpose. <laughs> my mom <laughs> it was something about me not being able to use the bathroom and I had to go so bad and so I was pissed and I stood there no pun intended. <laughs> and I stood there and I just peed on myself because she won't let me go <laughs> to the bathroom. oh damn Mm-mm. and she beat my ass <laughs> where was y'all at it's the way you laughing. Why do we be laughing at this stuff? Because it's not funny, but we be fucking laughing about this stuff. I don't know if we're laughing out of like, tr- like a, it's a traumatized life. It's, if we laugh, it's a trauma response. I don't. People always talk about Gen X is like a hard generation. Like they like just the don't give a fuck generation. Like they was really getting their ass beat. Like we was getting yeah. our ass whooped, but they was really getting their ass fucked up. And they just, you know, they stone cold. We laugh at everything. Like, I just, I don't, I'm laughing because it's just funny now. Like, what the fuck yeah. possessed me to be so mad that I'm going <laughs> to fix you and just stand there and pee on myself? Like, what was I thinking? <laughs> and she beat I'm show my you. And she beat my head. I was like, oh, why would you do that? We were almost home. Like, because it was so funny because I really wanted to say we were outside the house and she was mm. taking too long to get inside the house. And you know, like, how it is when, like, you get closer, you get closer, you get closer. Right. Yeah, I just stood outside and just, like, beat on myself. <laughs> See, yeah, you know what? I'm thinking, like, y'all out in public or something, you know, you was right there. You was literally right there. But I mean, like, if she was taking too long, because I feel that, especially if you had been holding it already. And we were coming from my Nana's house. So it wasn't like we were like, I don't know. And then she probably, she probably told you to go to the bathroom. Probably she probably was so. like, well, just try. And you ain't want to try. <laughs> probably so. I want to say I was like three or four. Hell yeah. That's happened. definitely what happened. That's definitely <laughs> what happened. I was Damn. definitely like three or four. She be that's a little toddler ass whooped. Okay. Damn. Oh man. The guy, okay, so Paul takes his little pissy ass draws and like rings them out over the side of the balcony. First of all, why you just ain't rent them out in the sink? Wasn't he just in the bathroom? He was in the bathroom. So why you didn't just wash them right there in the sink? What made you go walk to the balcony with dripping draws to ring them over the side of the balcony? And then the drink falls in the guy's drink and he drinks it. And then was like, <laughs> is there any more? Does it After you saying this, taste like piss? It just, I just, I, uh, you know, and it's that's like, not, it's, that's it's not the worst funny. thing that happens in this movie. But, keep but I want to say that's funny because most people think that beer tastes like pee i swear so it does i can if it, they had coronas or some shit i can see them being like this tastes like pee we'll see okay now okay. corona if you give me one of those coronas that's like upside down in a drink i can take that i'm not drinking a corona or any type of beer by itself because it tastes like this i don't drink beer yeah no i don't, I don't drink either. beer period like just no for one i'm, I'm like the hops so Okay, there's a lot of kills in this movie that are just immaculate. Paul's kill, I think I like the comedy in it because when he snatches his arm off and he's like, 
you're invited to my comeback show. And he's like waving Paul's hand back and forth. I'm like, why are you fucking with this man like that? I would be screaming. I would be hollering. And he is, but nobody can hear him because the music is so loud. And I like that they actually thought about this because of course he would be screaming and yelling. Also, okay, this is just a picky, picky pick about me because y'all know I like wordplay. When he pulls the rabbit out of his mouth and he was like, it wasn't a hair, it was a fluffy rabbit. I wanted him to say a fluffy hair. <laughs> yeah, I just, you know, I thought, okay. I also love when he like punts his head, like the head just spirals out blood. Like you just see all this blood just go. <laughs> like, damn, he kind of deserved that though. So I'm not mad. Sarah, not having enough picks a fight with Kate who instantly shuts her ass the fuck up with a head butt as she should. Just what be, what what would make you think to hit somebody, somebody like I no I'm not gonna no 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 that's no. your first instinct yes yes I I'm swear. thinking about the pain in my head I'm not about the head but you have you seen my forehead you <laughs> I'm still not about to do it I know for a fact that I might and okay the only thing that stops me from head butting somebody is I vividly remember, because I did this all the time and I still do when I can, watching 1,000 Ways to Die. And you know how like sometimes when you hit your head too hard, your brain fucking rattles and that shit can kill you. So me- I accidentally headbutt my dog. Why would I, and that shit hurt like hell. (laughs) Why would I want to headbutt a human? I've headbutted people before. Sometimes on accident. One time it was on purpose. But- it's not my first thing, but I'm telling you, if I ever get into a fight again, that might be my first call to action because you will not be expecting that shit. I, just, I played soccer and I refuse to even hit my head, hit the ball with my head. Like, I'm just my head. <laughs> and then I get migraines and stuff. I don't want nothing to do in like no pain to my head at all. OK, I, I get it. I understand it. Also, another thing is, as I always say, my face, my face card, very valid. I don't want no permanent bruises. You know. Chill. Meanwhile, Stitches pulls a toucan Sam and follows his nose to find Bulger, who is eating canned strawberries in the pantry. This, okay, you know what? Let's just stop right here. Bulger's kill. Oh, he was eating canned strawberries? Yes. Why and he looks so he, nasty. Why do I think he was eating tomatoes out the can? Ew. Ew. <laughs> do they make canned tomatoes? Like, besides salsa? You can buy diced tomatoes. In the- oh, diced tomatoes. Duh. Duh, <laughs> duh, duh. But, but they can come in the variety. They can even come diced. They can come whole. Like, just. I didn't know. That's what I, I think. Yeah. That's what I was thinking of when you said it looked like that. I was thinking of whole tomatoes in a can. I've and I was seen just that. like. Like, oh my God. Have I ever bought it? No, I just stick to the diced tomatoes. But yeah. Like it it just and <laughs> when Stitches walks in, he's like, oh Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So Stitches, Bulger threw ice cream at Stitches when he was a little baby. Okay. So Stitches was like, I bet. Stitches cuts open Bulger's head, pries it open, takes like a, a scooper. Cane. And start scooping little balls of Bulger's brain into a cup. Like, perfect little ice cream ball scoops. That made me sad. I liked Bulger. I did not want to see him go. I knew he was going to go. But, like, I was like, we could have held on to him just a little bit long. But you know what took me out? What? That fucking foot shuffle out the pantry. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> He was just in first position. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. He literally said, shoot. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> but before that, Sarah comes in, you know, hearing Bolger screaming. And I love that Stitches just goes into full marionette mode and just picks him up. And I'm like, girl, do you not see that this man's eyes are not looking at you? Like, it's not the normal Bulger banter like I know y'all not super super close but Bulger seems like a person that everybody actually y'all just argued so you know you know how he give it up 
So you thought that was okay. All right, girl, whatever, it's fine. I do like the moment because when Bolger is getting his, the music cuts up again and we're hearing that song, I Just Died in Your Arms Tonight. But it cuts to them and he's literally in Stitch's arms. I, I'm a sucker for shots like that. I loved it. Also, the TikTok. Let me let's just talk about this. The TikTok transition when Stitch is just like shaking the blood off his hands and it just like goes white. He has Bulger's blood all in his hands and he just does this. And they just clean. It was flawless. I loved it. <laughs> hey now Sarah again enters the attic to look for Paul there she's attacked by stitches although she manages to kind of fight back keeping her foot in his neck she tries to escape but stitches drives an umbrella through her skull killing her I gave her an A for effort yeah she felt fast like girl you better put that shit to work but one thing that killed me was when the heel came out of his neck it was so clean yeah, he did. Like, y'all couldn't, y'all couldn't throw. I mean, yeah, but he still got to have something. We see what he's made out of. So it needed to have something on it. It's just not going to come out clean like that. Some type of residue, something. But the practical effects in this movie overall, I'm going to keep saying this. Once again, are good. The only thing about this eye scene is like when it first happens, the small amount of CG that they put in it, you're just like, Ugh. but the rest of it, when she falls back and the umbrella just slides up her pupil, the eye okay. pops out into her mouth and then the umbrella just opens up squirting her blood. Like that shit, like. That was hmm. a creative scene, but it was nasty. Very. But also, okay, because we got to address this, I guess. Trigger warning for animal abuse. Stitches, why? What did the cat do? Did I miss something? What did the cat yeah, do? Yeah, I was confused about that. <laughs> I was so confused. And clearly, like, you see it's a fake cat. Like, you, they, they, I don't think they're even trying to hide the fact that it's a fake cat he's swinging around. But I'm just like, it didn't make stitches, sense. we didn't need to do this. Like, don't, and I'm not the biggest cat person, but we, we didn't have to do that. Through his telescope, Tommy sees stitches and goes to warn Vinny of his presence. But... Uh, Vinny, it, it, it's not going nowhere because Vinny trying to clap some cheeks of this little girl. We'll talk about her in a second. Tommy tries to warn Kate and the other party goers, but they don't believe him either. Vinny, I know a boy like Vinny. I knew a boy like Vinny. Like, just doing anything to touch a girl. Like, just Nick. And first of all, sis, sis, because I don't know your name, homegirl. Something have, much Mary. Whatever. Because I guess, okay, so the thing with her is she used to be a little thick with it, but I guess she lost weight. Y'all know how that goes. So now all the boys trying to be on her face and shit. And Vinny is like, I can make your nipples hard without touching them. Okay, first of all, I know you like in middle high school, high school whatever. So I know this shit kind of excites you when you get male attention. I get that. But girl, you knew what he was about to do. I know you knew. <laughs> But she wanted it to happen anyway, because they go upstairs, they doing what they're doing, and that's why Vinny can't concentrate right now. Anyway, outside, Stitches attacks Richie while he's just trying to catch a little flight. Richie attempts to flee, but he trips and falls. Stitches rips out his intestines and fashions them into a little balloon animal before stabbing him with a bike pump in the back of the head, inflating his head. Stitches Stitches manages to pump enough air into Richie's head, causing it to explode. Again, practical effects. They look There's good. There's no way that he was running, holding his intestines, hanging out his body. There's no fucking way. And then going to trip over him again. First of all, it's the fact that you sat there and watched him do that with your intestines and you could have been running since we know you were able to run. Because, baby, I would have been out. I probably would have been in shock, though. Maybe on site, because I'm just like, this nigga just sliced me. My hot dogs are outside my body. Like, what the? Like, mm. no, 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 no. The hair blowing up definitely was giving me gushers. It was giving me airheads. Once again, it was giving, I don't know. It was the way they went about doing the practical effect that it looked really, really good. 
but it looked like something again that I would see like on Goosebumps or Are You Afraid of the Dark? Something like that. Even though sometimes those shows, those effects got kind of cheesy, but I ain't gonna go in on it. Vinny discovering Tommy to be telling the truth attempts to leave, but Stitches attacks them. Tommy stabs him and Vinny covers him up with a blanket. And after a little curved sad stump session, they run away. The part when Stitches is like, you are 16. I don't want to go to jail. I was like, oh, hold up. No, what are you doing to him? Yeah, I'm like, what are you doing to him, Stitches? Like, wait, 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 wait. Because the first time, I remember the very first time I seen this movie. At this point, I kind of like drifted off and he said it and I looked up because I thought he was like talking to a female. Like, what the fuck is you doing? Because I knew he was in the bedroom and I replayed it and I seen what was going on. But I was still trying to figure out, I was like, well, what would make him say that to Vinny? Like, huh, whatever. Confusion. Yeah. After Stitches crashes the party, Tommy and Vinny rescue Kate, but Stitches knocks her unconscious as they try to leave. Tom tries to resuscitate her, but Vinny leaves them behind, and Stitches attempts to drown Tommy in a sink that Vinny previously vomited in. Time out, because that sink, before Vinny even touched it, already looked nasty. It was fucking Cheetos floating around and stuff. And then they, like, show you the point of view of him, like, look in the particles. That's Ugh. disgusting. I just would, oh, I would have, no, I, it would have been over because I would have been blowing chunks and I probably would have choked, like, ugh, no. But the bubbles thing was funny. I did love that. Kate awakens and throws a knife at Stitches while Tommy deduces a manner in which to defeat the clown. In order to kill him, they must destroy the egg kept in his van. I did like the little bubble scene. Even though they were CGI bubbles, I literally did not care. It was funny. And that, like like I said this once, I'll say it again. This movie knows when to give you comedy and when to give you horror. You know? Tommy and Kate hop on the bikes, because, you know, we've seen that he got two bikes now, and are pursued by Stitches, who was on his little tricycle, making their way to the den in the graveyard. While hiding, Tommy begins to have the hiccups, and bitch, I get it, because my hiccups be lethal just like this. Kate kisses him in order for him to stay quiet, which, that does not work for me. I, I have to let you all know, it does not work for me. Tommy searches for Stitch's egg among the collection of them while Kate keeps an eye out for Stitch's, but the pair are soon discovered. While deciding which of the two to kill, Vinny ties Stitch's shoelaces together again, tripping him making him drop his egg, but he does not smash it because he catches himself on his hands. Tommy forces Stitch's head down, smashing the egg, and Stitch's explodes into a mixture of magic tricks and yolk. I just want to say that this nigga was annoying as hell on his tricycle, pedaling hard as fuck, talking about the entire <laughs> <so wee! laughs> Look, Let me tell you something. I'm going to be very honest. They do make bigger trikes for like, you know, like how TLC used to ride around on the tricycles and stuff. So they make trikes for us. But have you ever tried to ride a child trike? That shit is hard. It's hard because clearly it's not made for our size and pumping your legs up and down like that, bitch. No, absolutely not. When he tried to go up that hill and he just said, fuck it and pick this shit up and just walked. (laughs) I'm glad, though, that Vinny didn't actually leave his man hanging. Yeah, I was like, Vinny, if you left, that's some bitch shit. That's literally... I do like the way after he tied his shoes, he just rolled away. Also, I love that we do get a little bit of Bulger and a little flashback because Tommy is trying to figure out how to open the egg so he can get it out. And he remembers how to open it for righty tidy lefty Lucy. I love that that comes back. Love that for him. And I love the demise of stitches, like blowing up into the egg. And then like some of it is like fried egg and some of it isn't like, it's just, I was into it. That's fine with me. He's a bad egg. Six months later, Tommy has moved into a new house down the street and is dating Kate. While the couple are in Tommy's old tree house, Kate gives Tommy a new telescope 
and his old one is positioned so as to focus on the den in the graveyard. There, the motley is attempting to piece Stitch's broken egg back together while getting some, you know, snubby tummy. Huh, the egg is now fully restored, indicating that Stitch's might return. After the film cuts to black, we hear Stitch's saying, everybody happy? The end. These are some freaky deaky clowns. I totally missed the fact that dude was getting hit. <laughs> yeah, literally. Like it was, you remember when we used to be little and we used to watch BET Uncut and still tipping video came on and it took us a second to realize the dude was getting hit in the front seat of the car. I don't even remember that video. Oh yeah, girl, it's crazy. He literally sitting in his car, still tipping on faux foes, getting some sloppy. Like it, it's just crazy. Like, yeah. These mm-hmm. are some freaky deaky clowns. And these girls, they don't love themselves. Or maybe they got a clown fetish. I don't fucking know. I'm not going to knock you. Ain't no shame, maybe. baby. Be your thing. Just make sure you ahead of the game. I thought it was decent. I didn't hate it. It made me laugh. <laughs> At some parts. Other parts, I was like, okay. But yeah, it was, it was cool. I really love this one. This is probably more of my favorite out of the clown group and i do okay survivors you know what let's just let's do this right now let's just get to it ratings stitches got a 5.7 out of 10 on imdb a 42 percent on rotten tomatoes a 2.8 out of 5 on letterbox and 82 percent of google users like this movie johnny what do you rate stitches um i had one rating but i'm changing it Ooh, we got a change don't let Brittany hear that <laughs> whatever <laughs> i'm giving it a 60 oh that's pretty high especially it from was last 50 week's at, tarot. it was 50 at first especially from last week's episode sheesh but speaking of last week's <laughs> episode okay not so much terrifier because i was okay with my terrifier score but i do have to say i went back and i listened to clown and i was like damn I rated this a 55 like was I sure because I would mm, I mean I know I said the movie was long and that kind of threw me off a little bit but I liked everything else so I am going to renege my score and I am going to give it an extra 15 tickets because I really liked it okay so that's gonna bump that up to a 70 so clown 70 terrifier is gonna stay at a 75 and for stitches stitches is a good time as you can tell as we were talking about it like the effects like i'm always down for some teens getting fucked up especially if the teens were shitheads in the beginning like they fucking deserved it i love that stitches one-liners a little creepy but at the same time i'm a fred head so it's not like i'm not used to that so i'm gonna give stitches a cool little 80 okay With that being said, we could go ahead and dip out to the souvenir shop because I got a cute little DIY we can get into. Thanks for writing. Before you go, take a detour into the souvenir shop. I mean, technically, it's it's literally 3% of a DIY. So I think the egg thing is really cool, right? So what if in the park, the survivors, they can paint a little self-portrait egg and we get the little case to put it in, but they could take that shit home. I don't want that shit. We're, we're not keeping that here. <laughs> I mean, what we gonna do? We just gonna have thousands of eggs. That shit's gonna stink. Like, we don't want that for the part. And if it's hard boiled and you don't know, crack it open, you be fine. Some eggs are going to get cracked. Like, that place is going to already have an egg smell. Let's not make it worse by just having extra eggs around. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, no, 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 no. Maybe, like, the employees, their eggs can be on display. Like, if we have some celebs, like, some guests, like, you know, Fear Street and them, like, all of the Carpenter Queens, like, they can have eggs. But, I'm just, we, you know, mm mm. Because once it starts stinking, we shutting it down. Don't be a part of the I'm just, I'm just, you know what? Uh, I'd rather be the party pooper than be a dead clown that come back to life fucking up kids. <laughs> you might not be coming back. You might not come back and fuck up kids, though. You might come back and fuck up somebody else that wrong. Yeah. 
maybe come f up the egg factory or something i don't know <laughs> you ready to get into these park announcements yeah let's go we are three for four in our theme and next week i am so excited this was a patreon pick we couldn't decide if we wanted to do the original or the remake of it and the patrons decided that we are doing the 2017 remake it chapter one i am ready to talk about pennywise y'all know this movie kind of long so it's gonna be a nice a fun ass little ride John, have you seen this? No. Ooh, girl. I am so fucking excited. Okay, survivors, make sure you tune in next week. If you're on Patreon, you're definitely going to get that episode early and you get to see what John A's reaction is to this new iteration of Pennywise. I and, haven't uh, seen the original, so. Oh, damn. Oh, wow. I was never watching either or because I don't like fucking clowns. Right, because you don't like clowns. So, yeah, <laughs> so. yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, no, I get that for you. I get that for you. But yeah, so I oof, I can't wait. Survivors, you can always get on with us on any social media, D180 Podcast on IG, Twitter, TikTok. As we bring up all the time, you can definitely get into our Patreon for some exclusive content. Next week, we're going to be wrapping up our theme with 2017's It and announcing a new, god damn, we're announcing a new theme next week week in the april theme yeah. i'm excited about that one too like that one is going to be a bop y'all always know it's a good fucking time at the park with that being said y'all we gonna see y'all next week bye i'll see you soon